Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 2 of the chapter Chemical Bonding and Molecular Structure. In the previous video, I discussed the Causal-Lewis approach towards chemical bonding and the modification made by Langmuir. In this video, I will tell you how to write the Lewis structures. Let us come to it straight. There are five steps that you have to take, keep in mind when you are making the Lewis structure of a compound or a molecule which may be an, uh, the molecule of an element. What are these steps? The first step is that once you have the formula of the compound or the molecule, you should count the total number of valence electrons that are there in the entire molecule. That is, you have to find the sum of the valence electrons of all the atoms that are involved in the molecule, that are present in the molecule. For example, if you have methane, methane is CH4. Carbon has four electrons in its outermost shell, that is four valence electrons, and hydrogen, each hydrogen has one valence electron. So there are four valence electrons contributed by the four hydrogens and four valence electrons of carbon which brings the total to a eight. The second step is once you've written down, once you know the total number of valence electrons that you have to deal with, the next step would be that if the species given to you is an anion, an anion means it is negatively charged and negative charge is due to addition of electrons. So if there is a single negative charge, add one electron to this sum. If there are two negative charges, add two electrons. So you have to add the number of electrons that is equal to the number of charges on that species. For example, if you have CO3 2 negative, CO3 2 negative means CO3 oxygen has six valence electrons, carbon has four valence electrons, there are three oxygens, so six into three plus four is 22, and there is a two negative charge on the carbonate ion. Therefore, this two negative charge means there are two electrons more in addition to the valence electrons that are present, which were 22. So the sum comes out to be 22 plus 2, which is 24. If the ion is a cation, a cation means it is positively charged. And a positive charge is possible when electrons have left a species. It can be an atom, it can be a group of atoms, uh, an ion or a molecule, whatever. So a cation, if it is a cation, you have to subtract the same number of electrons as is the number of positive charges on the ion. For example, ammonium ion is NH4 positive. So ammonium has 9 N nitrogen, has 5 electrons, 4 hydrogens, each contributing 1 valence electron. So 5 plus 4 is 9. And 9, and since there is a positive charge, a single positive charge would mean removal of one electron. So ammonium ion would have 9 minus 1, which is equal to 8 valence electrons that you have to deal with. So we must first know what is the number of electrons that we are dealing with. After this, we now are aware of the number of electrons that we have to distribute in the entire structure. So the next step that is, that you have to look at the formula that is given to you and you have to see and you have to guess how would the structure be. Generally you would see there would be a central atom in the molecule and there would be other atoms that would be surrounding the central atom. So the number would give you an idea this is one and these are four so obviously that one should be somewhere in the center and the four should be surrounding it. Right? One is just a little idea you get by looking at the formula. So you have to guess the structure of the molecule and you distribute the electrons and you start distributing these electrons, the total electrons among all the atoms and they should be as either as lone pairs or bond pairs. Basically, you make one one bond each in the beginning and then we find what is left. I'll come to that later. So you have, to, you have to think a little and then assign pairs of electrons as lone pairs or bond pairs. When we do an example here, this would be clear to you. The next step then is that generally the least electropositive element is usually in the middle. I told you the one which is present in lesser number is usually in the middle and that usually is the electropositive element. And the electronegative element is normally the one that is surrounding, not in methane. Hydrogen is more electropositive in comparison to carbon. But yet, 
In this case, see carbonate ion, carbon is more electropositive. So it is carbon which is in the center. In ammonium, nitrogen and hydrogen. So hydrogen is more electropositive anyway, but generally it is the least electronegative or the most electropositive element would be in the center. Yeah, if you have NF3, fluorine is more electronegative than nitrogen. So nitrogen is least electronegative or more electropositive. So the electropositive element is usually in the middle. This, you know, with where compounds where there is hydrogen, hydrogen usually is the more electropositive element, but that does not become make it the central atom. The reason being that hydrogen has a combining capacity of only one electron. It can only form one bond and you cannot be the central atom holding so many other atoms around you if you can, you have a capacity of forming only one bond, right? So uh, this factor is not so visible in uh, compounds that have hydrogen in them. But usually, the more electropositive element would occupy the center of the molecule. This is not a rule, but generally, this is found. Then the last step is that after you've made the layout of the molecule, okay, the molecule should look like this, then you start making single bonds between the molecules. And after making the single bonds, you now assess the situation. How many electrons are required for by which element in order to or which atom in order to complete its octet and how can you do that for that you may have to make multiple bonds somewhere you may have to make uh, that is multiple bonds means a double covalent or a triple covalent and sometimes you even have to form coordinate bonds a covalent bond is usually formed by the contribution of two atoms one electron given by one one electron given by the other there's an overlap there's a sharing of electrons and both the atoms possess that uh, electron now the both the atoms belong to both these uh, both the electrons belong to both these atoms thereby making the uh, completing the octet but sometimes uh, one of the atoms contributes a lone pair of electrons towards bonding and uh, such a bond is known as a coordinate bond. As we do our examples, we will, uh, we will observe some of these coordinate bonds also. So let us start uh, finding out or making the Lewis structures of these molecules. I've chosen these few examples and I hope by the end of uh, solving all these, uh, making Lewis structures should be an easy task for you. Okay, the first one is H2, hydrogen molecule. So let's make the two atoms, hydrogen and hydrogen. Both the hydrogens have one electron each, right? If they have one electron each, what should the structure be like? Hydrogen, there should be a single bond between the two hydrogens, right? So the Lewis structure would be, would show you a single bond between the two hydrogens and this pair of electrons, one contributed by one hydrogen and one contributed by the other hydrogen means there's a single covalent bond. The next molecule is O2. O2, so you have two oxygen atoms, one oxygen, one oxygen. So what is, what is the first step? Find out the total number of valence electrons. So both the oxygens have six electrons each. And you know what, when I said that you have to guess the structure, you need to be use a little intelligent guessing. Oxygen has six electrons. In order to complete its octet, what does it have to do? How many electrons does it need? Two. If it needs two electrons, it means oxygen will form two bonds. In order to get these two electrons, oxygen will form two bonds. So how would you draw the Lewis structures? You will draw the Lewis structures in such a way that two electrons to form two bonds should fall between the two atoms, right? So these are the two oxygens and the overlap, if you really look, if we usually do not make the, uh, the circles, but you can, I'll do it for you to understand this, that if this is so, you will have these, the two pairs of electrons, they should be towards each other so that you can show that between the two oxygen atoms, there's one single bond and then after a single bond has been formed, the octet is not complete. Now this has six plus one, seven. This also has six plus one, seven. Obviously there should be one more bond. So O2 molecule will have OO double bond and this would be the Lewis structure. 
So, in the Lewis structure, you need not make the lines. It will be understood that these two electrons are the shared pair. You need not even make the circles. Right? Just the electron dot structures are enough. So, the next molecule is C2H4. C2H4. So, we'll say hydrogen makes single bonds. So, hydrogen usually is on the ends. And the two carbons, they should form the center. Right? So how would they form the center? I have carbon and I have carbon. Each carbon has four valence electrons. Right? So there would be four valence electrons on carbon. So I'll make one. Uh, okay. I'll make, if each has four, carbon should form four bonds. Right? It can, and we have four hydrogens. So we give two hydrogens to this carbon and two hydrogens to this carbon. Okay? It's just again guessing. We are guessing that there are two carbons and four hydrogens. So one carbon should have two hydrogens, one carbon should have two hydrogens. Right? Now every hydrogen has one electron and every carbon has four electrons. Every carbon has four electrons and every hydrogen has one electron. So let us make the four electrons of carbon and let us try to make them facing these hydrogens and the other atom. So we have one, two, three, four. That is two electrons of carbon I have made here and two electrons of carbon I have made here. Now carbon has four electrons and it needs to form four bonds in order to complete its octet. So what will I do? I'll draw the next two electrons here. Now each carbon requires to form four bonds because it has four electrons and it needs four more electrons to complete its octet. Hence carbon should form four bonds and every hydrogen has one electron. It needs one more electron to complete its duplet. So I have positioned them in such a way that every hydrogen forms one bond with every carbon, with both the carbons, one bond here, one bond here. So all the four hydrogens have their duplet completed. We are now left with carbon. Carbon should form four bonds. Two it has formed with two two with these two hydrogens. Let us take this carbon. It has formed two bonds with the two hydrogens. So now carbon has four electrons plus two electrons of hydrogen, which makes it six electrons. We carbon still needs two electrons. So in order to get those two electrons, it should form two more bonds. And that it does with this. The situation is the same with this carbon. It has six, four plus two, that is six electrons. It needs two more. It's easy. Both the carbons should form a double bond here. So the structure of ethene molecule would be like this. If you remove the lines, that would be the Lewis dot structure. That is carbon with two bonds with carbon. A bond with hydrogen here, a bond with hydrogen here, a bond with hydrogen here, and a bond with hydrogen here. Right? So this is how you make a molecule of ethene. Let us now come to the next example. After ethene, we have ethyne. So let's make ethyne now. Ethyne has is C2H2. Now, there are again similar to this, there are two carbons, and I'll place the two carbons like this. And now we have only one hydrogen, so we make the two hydrogens on both the sides. We give each carbon one hydrogen. And this is the more electropositive element, rather, actually, hydrogen is, but since hydrogen is always on the ends, therefore, carbon will be in the middle. Now, carbon has to form four bonds, while hydrogen has to form one we first make the one bond between carbon and hydrogen. So which means I've given carbon one electron. We are now left with three more electrons and carbon has to bond with all the three uh, electrons because it needs three more. One, three plus one, four. Four plus one with hydrogen makes it only five. It needs three more electrons to complete the octet. So it should form three bonds. So what should I do? I should place the three electrons between the two carbon symbols. And when I do that, now it's understood that the carbon, it forms a bond with hydrogen like this. This carbon also forms a bond with hydrogen like this, but it forms three bonds with the other carbon. 
So the ethyl molecule, it has one bond between the carbon and hydrogens and a triple covalent bond between the two carbon atoms. Thus completing the octet of the two carbons and the duplet of the hydrogens. You are basically keeping all these points in mind, right? But since we have not yet come to a compound that has a charge, we have not gone to the charge cation and ion part. So let us now come to the next compound that we will, we will find the structure for. The next compound after ethyne is ozone, O3. Now there are three oxygen atoms. So oxygen has how many valence electrons? Six. So six threes are 18. Ozone is a neutral molecule. I'm just trying to follow these steps to make it clear that we do keep these steps in mind. So there are three, they are 18 electrons and the 18 electrons are around the three oxygen atoms. There will be no, since all of them are identical, one of these will be in the middle and the other two will be on the sides. And then we'll try and see how the electrons are to be adjusted. It's neutral, so we do not have to add or subtract any electrons. So let us have oxygen here, an oxygen here, and an oxygen here. Each oxygen has six electrons. So let us first make the one, two, three, four, five, six. Similarly, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons, okay? One, two, three, four. I'm not positioning them correctly yet. Now, every oxygen needs two electrons to complete its, its octet. So the first thing that we do is that in order to form two bonds, one oxygen should combine with the other oxygen to form two bonds. So let us say that these two have formed a bond, a double bond, right? If these two have formed a double bond, then it means that 6 plus 2, 8, 6 plus 2, 8. The octet of these two oxygens is completed, but this oxygen is just lying out there. It has not bonded with any. So this is not right. What should we do? We should first make one bond between all the atoms, join them together to form a molecule because that's how they exist in nature. So we would first join them to make one bond. Right? If we join them to make one bond, then one bond here and one bond here. Right? Now this oxygen has one, two, three, four, five. So it had six electrons of its own. And it was supposed to form two bonds, which it did. It has formed a bond here and a bond here, which is completed. So one uh, guess would be that ozone should have a bonding here now. If every oxygen should form two bonds, one bond between this oxygen and this oxygen should, should complete the structure of ozone. Just take a look. Now, uh, this oxygen has forms two bonds. So it has six plus two makes it uh, eight electrons. This has six plus two makes it eight electrons. 6 of its own plus 2 here and here. So each one has the octet completed. So one of the structures of ozone is that it should, this is how it should be present. But our knowledge of coordinate bonds shows us that this is not actually so. The actual structure of ozone is that ozone has the three oxygens here, one of the oxygens forms a double bond with one oxygen. So you have one pair is used up here to form a double bond. It's now left with two, four electrons. This is also left with four electrons. And this has six electrons, right? So what happens as a double bond is present between these two oxygens, here, this oxygen uses a lone pair, this lone pair, and it forms a bond with this oxygen with that lone pair. It forms a bond using these two electrons. And when it uses, so let me make these two electrons here. So when it uses these two electrons to form the bond, the electron belongs to this oxygen, but it has moved towards this oxygen. Although, and it is shared equally by the two oxygens, this oxygen has, acquires a negative charge. And 
because it has attracted electrons of this oxygen and this electrons has kind of pushed one of its electrons away and actually given a pair of its electrons to do the bonding and such a bond is known as a coordinate bond where the contribution of the electrons is not done by both the atoms but one atom contributes the pair of electrons and that atom that contributes the pair of electrons acquires a positive charge. So the actual structure of ozone with later study was found to be this. We are not going into the details how uh, the structure was found out. We are just going learning that some of the structures are known to us and we try to justify or distribute the electrons using Lewis uh, structures in order to understand what the arrangement might have been like. So sometimes this is what our thinking would tell us but the actual structure of ozone molecule is like this. So after ozone, the next molecule we have is NF3. NF3. Now out of these, nitrogen is more electro positive than fluorine. So nitrogen should form the central atom. So I'll make nitrogen in the center and it would have the three fluorines. So nitrogen has five electrons, one, two, three, four, five. And the three fluorines, fluorine has seven electrons. Each fluorine needs to form one bond. So we'll make that one electron that is not paired towards the central atom. So fluorine has seven electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, and the one electron which has to be bonding, I put it on the side of nitrogen. The third fluorine is here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is the seventh electron. So this would be the structure of NF3, where one bond would be formed by every fluorine with nitrogen. And nitrogen would be left with one lone pair of electrons. Every fluorine, after forming one bond, has three lone pairs of electrons, but it had seven electrons of its own, it made a bond and got eight electrons. This had five electrons of its own, made three bonds, five plus three, eight, and every fluorine has seven plus one, eight. Seven plus one, eight. So the octet of all the atoms is completed. So that was NF3. Let us now make the Lewis structure of this carbonate ion. The carbonate ion, let us first see, I'm now trying to follow these steps to make it clear that how we use these steps in actually in all the uh, examples, but just elaborating it here. Carbon has four valence electrons, plus oxygen has six valence electrons, and there are three oxygens, so three into six. And the negative charge is two, so you will add two more electrons to this. So the total comes to 24. There are 24 electrons that have to be put. Now out of these, carbon is more electropositive, so that becomes the central atom. So I put carbon here, and I write the three oxygens on all the three sides. One, two, and three. Since it is an ion, I put the entire structure inside a bracket, and I put the charge to negative. So now I have 24 electrons and I have to adjust them here. So each, first of all, we put a pair of electrons between oxygen and carbon, between oxygen and carbon, between oxygen and carbon to make that single bond to, or to make the atoms bonded to the central atom. After this, we have now, how many have we made? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Let us put here eight electrons here, the carbons. Let me put two electrons here and two electrons here. Two and 23, 24. If you look at this now, every oxygen has eight electrons. If you see, these are eight electrons each. But carbon, how many does it have? Two plus two plus two. If you imagine these to be bonded, it has only six electrons. If it has only six electrons, it means these are bond pairs. So this is a single bond here between this carbon and this car oxygen. This one is a single bond here, a pair of electrons here. This is a single bond here, a pair of electrons here. And this is a single bond here, a pair of electrons here. So we have eight, eight, 
8, but only 6 around carbon. So what should we do? This one also has 8, this also has, oxygens are satisfied, only carbon is not. If I just move one pair of electrons here and I make a bond here with that pair of electrons, if this oxygen shares these two electrons here, then it forms a carbonate ion. Now carbon also has 8 and oxygen already had 8, it only contributed this pair here, so it still has 8 and every oxygen also has 8 electrons. So the octet is completed for all the atoms and this should be the best Lewis structure for carbonate ion. So this is how you make the structures for ions. Let us now make the structure of HNO3. So HNO3 is the molecule and this also, just like the carbonate ion, has 24 electrons. Right? So let us make the structure. Hydrogen is a terminal atom. We'll imagine this to be an NO3 negative ion and we'll make the structure N being more electropositive should be in the center. N, O, O and O. And with one of the oxygens, we add a hydrogen here. Right? So let us make the a pair of electrons to show the bond pair. There should be one bond here, one bond here, one bond here and one bond here. That is, we are first connecting with one bond, we are connecting the central atoms. Uh, atoms, all atoms to the central atom. And now we have to complete the 24. So how many do we have? We have to complete 8 for each. So this would be 1, 2 here, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? Now for every oxygen, there are 8 electrons. For hydrogen, there are 2 electrons. That's what it needs. And let's count the total number of electrons. 8, 8 plus 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We do have all the 24 electrons. Now the problem here is that every oxygen has 8 electrons. This has 8. Do you see here? 8. This has 8. Here. Hydrogen has 2 and this oxygen also has 8 electrons. The problem is with nitrogen, just like the carbonate ion, it now has only 6 electrons. So in order to uh, complete that, those 6 electrons of, uh, to complete its octet, one of the oxygens, what will it do? It will move its electrons here and make a double bond with nitrogen. So when the double bond is formed, I'll draw these like this now, this pair, so that you feel this is a single bond here. Again, this I can draw it like this to show you the single bond here. So this would be the and between the two oxygen and hydrogen. This is the single bond here. So this would be the structure of HNO3. So what happened? There was all the octets are now completed. Oxygen had 8, it still has 8. Nitrogen had 6, but with, by forming a double bond with this oxygen, it now has 8 uh, electrons. So the octets are completed and this should be the structure of HNO3. Let us now write the structure of carbon monoxide, CO. What is the total number of electrons? Carbon brings 4 electrons and oxygen 6. So we now have a total of 10 electrons. So carbon being more or less electronegative, we consider it to be uh, the central atom, although there are only two atoms, carbon and oxygen. And let's make a bond between the two. So a bond means there are two electrons. And we now have a total of 10 electrons. So let us fill up oxygen. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 of oxygen filled up and 9, 10. So we have Oxygen has its octet completed here, but carbon has only four electrons, if you see. Do you see here? Carbon now has only four electrons. It needs how many? Two more. It needs four more electrons to complete its octet. So what is done? One of these pairs here moves from here and comes to comes between carbon and oxygen. So we have one of these coming here to make a double bond and Still, carbon has only six. So one of these pairs also moves here to form a triple bond. So carbon monoxide would have a structure like this. It would have carbon with oxygen in a triple bond. 
So that was carbon monoxide. Let us now come to the next ion that is NO2 negative. Right? So nitrogen would be the central atom, N, one oxygen here and one oxygen here. What's the total number of electrons we are bringing here? It is nitrogen is 5 and oxygen is 6 into 2, that's 12. And you have to add one electron because there's a negative charge. So this would be 12. 13 plus 5 would be 18. So 18 electrons. So let us first make a single bond between the two. So 1, 2, 3, 4 electrons gone, right? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Right? We've made the 18 electrons. Now, the 8 electrons of this oxygen are completed. 8 of this octet of this oxygen is also completed. But what about nitrogen? Nitrogen has only 6. When nitrogen has only 6, one of these oxygens is going to contribute, move its electrons towards nitrogen and form a double bond. Right? So this would be the structure and since it's an ion, you put the entire structure in a bracket and put the negative charge on it. It would have a single negative charge. So that would be NO2 negative. Let us now come to the next structure that is methane. Methane has carbon in the center because hydrogens always come to the end carbon CH4, 4 electrons and hydrogen 1 into 4 is 4 so we have 8 electrons in all. Carbon in the center and we put hydrogens on the 4 sides. It's one of the simplest glue structures to make. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One pair each to form to connect to the central atom. One bond here, one bond here, one bond here, one bond here. So the total number of electrons required was 8 and we've already made 8. So each hydrogen completes its duplet by making a single bond with carbon. And carbon had 4 of its own electrons, 4 bonds with the 4 hydrogens. So octet completed. So that's the structure of methane. And now we come to the last structure that I had planned for today. And that is NH4 positive, the ammonium ion. NH4 positive. Now nitrogen has five electrons. The four hydrogens are four into one, that is four electrons. And since it has a positive charge, you remove one electron from this, right? So we have five plus four minus one is three, five plus three is eight, so we have eight electrons. So nitrogen would be the central atom because hydrogen always occupies the sides. So we have hydrogen here, one, two, three, and Four. We make the four bonds because uh, that's how they get connected to the central atom. And we need eight electrons. So four on hydrogen. Each hydrogen can have only one electron. So they already have that one electron and they're forming the bond with nitrogen. One, two, three, four. And nitrogen now has eight electrons already. And eight electrons is what we needed. And the entire charge on the ion would be positive right ammonium ion it had eight electrons so that's how nitrogen basically has five electrons but it has uh, used the electrons and there's one positive charge which means one of the electrons is lost so now it has four electrons it forms four bonds with the four hydrogens so that is how we just Basically, are following these rules. We first find out the sum of the total number of electrons that are present. Then, after finding out the sum, if it's the anion, we add the number of electrons to the total sum. If it's a cation, we subtract those number of electrons from the total sum. Then, we find out the electropositive atom and we make it the central atom. Make one bond with all the other atoms to the central atom. And then, the remaining electrons are filled up first on the outer atoms to complete the octets. And then, check the central atom. If its octet is not completed, shift electrons towards that. And if it is completed, then we have our structure ready. So this is how you make the Lewis structures. With a little practice, you will only get better and uh, practice as much as you can. And if the video helped you, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to all your friends and keep returning for more videos on chemistry. 
Thank you and goodbye.